¿Qué pasa, mi gente? Welcome back again to another edition of Notre Ricans. I'm Mo. I'm Meals on Wheels. Lou. <laughs> and we've got another episode yet to talk about. And I think first on the subject of my mind, and I know it's on yours, and I want to hear your thoughts, Terminator Zero. Yes. I saw the first four episodes yesterday after you and I spoke. It is awesome. I thought it was awesome. I just need to know where does it fit in. That's the thing. It's, that's the funny part about Terminators. The Terminator has to deal with time travel. So think of, okay, the Flash and the reverse Flash mm -hmm. in the CW. Always, no matter what, Eobar Thong, when you think he's dead, he comes back. And the thing is, the future hasn't changed. He's still alive in the future. So he comes back to the past, even whether it's, it, whether it's uh, Eddie Thorne who kills himself and you think he, it's erasing uh, uh, the future Thorne from history. It's not because the future is still set. The past is not. At least that's the explanation of it all, which every time he shows up, that's what happens. You can't get rid of him because he always comes back because you would li like he's trying to get rid of the flash he goes back to his present even though he killed his mom but eventually eventually he still becomes a flash same thing with the terminator series because every time they go back they're they're changing not the past but not the future so much because the last one that happened uh with uh, Linda Blair's return I keep forgetting them because there's so many I think it was Terminator Salvation I think it was in which in the very beginning of the film it gives the depiction of Sarah Connor after the events of Terminator 2, Judgment Day, where they were on the run, on the run, on the run, and then they're somewhere in a tropical island, you know, away and removed from everything, and you think that everything is fine. And then all of a sudden, without warning, you see the Terminator coming out of, literally from the ocean, walking up to the land, towards the bar, heading towards John Connor. And now, when they thought they were safe, they're not. And then what happens? The Terminator kills John Connor. Right. But the future did not change. For some reason, the future corrected itself, and yet a new leader was then born. And then a new leader then took over the resistance against Skynet, or I forgot what's the, the name of the uh, system that they're calling it now, because it changed as well. Well, I, I don't know how far along you got last night. Uh -huh. Um they mentioned Skynet. Yes, they did. They yes, mentioned they did. Skynet. No, spoiler alert. They mentioned Skynet. The one that uh, Lee, the, the, one, the guy in Japan, is working on is, is a different name. And I don't know if you, if I left it off where, again, spoiler alert, <laughs> that, uh, that, that uh, Skynet has launched the missiles. Mm -hmm. And he makes his program come alive. Yes. But the program which he saw as far as the future of Skynet happening. Yes. So the, the, the question then becomes like, where did this guy come from? Because how do you know what is happening in the future that you're creating a program now to then change and defeat the possibility of the robots now committing genocide against humanity? Yes. The big twist is the nanny who is a robot. Oh my God, that was awesome! It is, and, and I love it. You know, it, it's it, it, it is it's, it's it took a while to build up. Mm -hmm. By like the third episode, that's when everything started building up, and that, that's something that anime does. It takes a while to build up, but you love the build up because the, the way the, the way animation builds its story, it it, it gives you that tease. It doesn't like make you go like, okay, what's next? No, you you go okay, what, I, you know what's you know like keep it feeding, Come, you know like don't stop at that, don't stop at that. I need more. Yes. And then the second one is like, all right, uh huh. And but here's the catch: you gotta pay attention to the Easter eggs and the little things, especially if you watch all the Terminator films. Somehow an Easter egg comes out here and there, like in the very beginning. There was always that Easter egg because I saw the article in, reg in regards to Terminator Genesis. 
and that and that was like a whole separate film in itself. It still right. dealt with John with uh, with Sarah Connor. It still dealt with Reese, and it still had the first Terminator. But but things were different. They moved in time ahead ten years, so the conception of John Connor didn't happen. But he still appeared in the future, which again. If you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, but it's already old and past, so I'm not going to look you at all. You should have watched it. Either way, in the future, when they went 10 years ahead, John Connor's an adult, but it's not. He's the more advanced uh, Terminator in the system. He's like, he's beyond, he's like a, a melding of both the, the, T1, uh, the T1000 liquid metal and the T, was it the T100 or 120 that they did, which was the female version. Uh, I loved her though, because you know mm -hmm. she went from an A cup to a D cup when the com comes. I was like, that's my kind of woman. No yeah. surgery involved. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I just had to say it like it is. But again, the next advanced version of it. So what happened to John? Of course, in the future, they've already killed John, and that Terminator became John in order to infiltrate and destroy the Resistance. But when, when Reese already went back into time, so did he. He had to go back into time to now create the future at the present. It's a little confusing. Uh, usually I would say smoke a bomb or whatever. I don't endorse this, but I, you know, a little helps. It goes a long way to understanding the universe. And all and time folks. traveling movies are confusing. They are because you go back and you say you go back to change history, but you don't. Even uh, was it Avengers Endgame said the difference. Like, why don't we just go back, find Thanos as a kid, and, yeah. and again, quoting the whole one, that's horrible. Yeah. But it's the truth. You're not changing anything. You're only creating a different present. You're not changing the future because the future has already been done. You know, it's like Thanos in Endgame figured out that something was going on through Nebula. And then he went back, and then he went into their future, and at that pr and their present, and was able to try and stop them. And he already knew what his end result was going to be. Hence, why he already knew they were collecting the stones. So he was already doing the work. They were already doing the work for him. All he had to do now was be there, yeah. infiltrate the nebula, his nebula, in order for them to open the doorway to bring him <coughs> in. So that he can go, okay, now that with the stones that you've collected, I'm going to just redo this whole thing and make sure none of you are here this there, time around. There was a comic book with Deadpool joining the X-Force. And oh. the question there was, do we go back in time and kill Apocalypse as a baby? You know, they've done that one, too. They've done that one. Something similar to that as well with yeah. the uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider. Oh, yeah? When he, when, when Thanos supposedly, like, the, the, the episode, the graphic novel is called Thanos Wins, in which he eliminates everyone, even kills Galactus. Oh, wow. And so the only one left on the, on the Earth was uh, Paul Castle. Right? Paul Castle. Castle, let me put it that way. Otherwise known as the Punisher. Mm -hmm. And so there's nobody to punish, but there's nobody to get revenge or whatever. And then Mephisto stepped in. And he made a deal with Mephisto to become the Ghost Rider. He became the Ghost Rider. Then Galactus shows up, wounded, mortally wounded because of Thanos. Knows Thanos is coming to kill him. And he says, you want me to help you? Well, give me the power to help you. And so he went from now a magical beast to now a cosmic one. Being viewed the power of cosmic, he became now known as the Cosmic Ghost Rider. And there was an issue in which... Oh my god, that's the sound of rain. Uh -huh. So, in that instance, when he became the cosmic ghost writer, there was that thought of him going back into time and doing exactly what they were talking about with Apocalypse. End him, end his reign. Right. But in essence, he wound up catching feelings and seeing you know, this child, and then he raised him. He raised Thanos at that point. And then... The future was totally different because now Thanos is a different character altogether. He's not the megalomaniac who needs to appease um, death. death in order to win her love. He is now more or less like, you know, Frank Castle. Frank, not Paul. Thank you. 
Frank Castle now punishing those who are spilling blood because he is the cosmic ghost rider. And anyone who spills blood, he's going to find out and he's going to punish them or make them see, or seek justice as the ghost rider would, the dependent stare, what have you. So again, time travel has that way of you could change something, but you're not changing the future. You may be creating, you're creating a new present. And then that present will determine what the future is going to be. Because the future has already been set. That was set the minute you left. Now what happens if you come back and you change the present, what future will come from that present? Because that one is already set, go back. Now you're, if you change the present and move forward, then maybe a different future, yes. But, you're, but the present hasn't changed yet until you change it. That's why the idea with Steve Rogers in the end was to return the stones at the point that they were taken. That way the new timeline would disappear because they collected everything. So put it back. Exactly. It gets real confusing. That's, you know, I, I like to think, you know, like that whole, um, uh, that whole back and forth and the stones and the hammer being placed back. And then, of course, Steve staying back in time and then going ahead and, and, and being with, um, with Agent Carter and having that life with Cajun Carter. I mean, again, he created a whole new present and then there's a whole new future. So the future that he had known before she died, now different because he, re he changed the present. That's, you know, you do change the future, but if you go back and, ch and, and thinking that you're going to change anything else as it where happened, no, you're only going to change the present. Then the future is determined by that present. That's how, that's how confusing it is. And that's time travel one-on-one. You can uncross your eyes now like I'm doing. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's very confusing. It very is. But you got to love the story that they put together at this point. So I think the best time traveling movie is Back to the Future. Oh, yeah. But that's... That. <laughs> I think that is the best trilogy. That whole scene where, where his mother kissed him. He's <laughs> like, what? You're my mother. Yeah. I say, like, Ew. Ew! I think that's the best. <laughs> the best, the best inset scene since Star Wars. You think so? Yes, remember. Uh, oh, Leia, yeah, yeah, Leia yeah, kissed yeah. Luke, and yeah, yeah, yeah. we didn't know until the future that that's his sister. So yeah, we were yeah. like, like, wait, he, he, but he, ew! Yeah. You kissed your sister, oh, and, she, and she didn't, you know, she didn't go for like a little, you know, packing or no. She went on down out right there. Yeah. Oh. That was Adam and Eve. Slobby, slobby, slobby. He's like, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I'm los pelos yeah. just thinking about that. No, stop. Yeah. <laughs> that's how bad it was. Oh. But that, that's the thing. It's the, the plot twists in it, especially like you said with the nanny. And it's like, wow. Because I, when I saw the nanny in the very beginning, I'm like, there's something off about it. Mm -hmm. There was something off. And that's what I love about anime because, you know, unlike live action, they, they, it, they do. They do. They and they're getting off. better at it because... Back in the days, like the facial expressions, you know, were, were, were very exaggerated. Now, the way the artistry is being done is more subtle. It's almost like, you know, like live action with an actor, you know. With an actor, you say, like, sometimes the misdirection is so subtle, you don't see it, and then boom, you're surprised. Whereas with this, it's like it, you, if you pay close attention, you could see something is off. Then it's a matter of just paying close attention of where it leads to. From that point, because they love leading you there, they love telling a story leading you there, and that's what gets better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, well, when uh, we return, when we turn, we will talk about the acolytes. Oh yes, we will. And uh, what else? There's another subject we're gonna talk about, but we'll leave that to your guessing game. Yes. You're not gonna say it right now. The future and is yet to be told. Or when you come back, you'll find it, out. It depends if the future is already there and yet they haven't told us. But anyway, talk to you in a minute. And let's pay some bills. Come, let's play. Come, let's play. Fun is what we crave. You're listening to New York City's LDM Radio. Another long stretch of continuous music. Yeah.
station in the world in the world is right here right now welcome back uh if you've suffered motion sickness i'm sorry but that's you know that's the vortex of time when you're going back and forth <laughs> and we're back again and now uh today's second subject which has definitely been on everybody's lips so far okay. one word the acolytes the whole announcement that season two has been canceled yes. has left a ripple down, you know, ripple effect, and I, and I'm like, I, I mean, I, I'm a little mixed with it. I'm a little mixed with it because, as I said before, when we were in discussion, it's like, I like it. It has promise. I mean, the the I will say that the execution of the show itself could have been better as the storytelling was concerned. You think it had promise? I think it did because mm. remember how I said in the beginning, they're showing a side of the Jedi that we've seen in other movies, but again, it did, it's, this is bringing it more to life. I had a little problem. Which is? Breaking lightsabers. Get, the, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here with that. That's <laughs> not, no. Breaking lightsabers. No, I mean, breaking mm -hmm. lightsabers. I think the show would have had more potential in the second season. Yes. Than the first season. Yes. Because towards the end of the last two episodes, they started hinting at Darth Plagueis. Uh -huh. So I know he would have played a very intricate role in the next season. Mm -hmm. I like the beginning of it because of the whole idea. Like our discussion in the very beginning, you asked me the question, would I rather be the light side of the force or the dark side of the force? And I remember I was telling you that neither. Because either one of the two has their positions about what they wish to do with the abilities that they have. Abilities set aside, we've already seen from the Mandalorian, even from, from was it um, the Rise of Skywalker, that even if a person is trained as a Jedi, can still emit and, and, and possess, well not possess, can still do the powers of the dark side. Rey shot out lightning from her hand. Grogu choked Cara Dune, force choke. I mean, but he was trained as a Jedi. Mm -hmm. like he shouldn't do that, but that's the thing. The force is just what it is, an energy field that they can control and do whatever they wish to do. Now, light or dark is just a matter of, as far as the light side is concerned, their idea of, and I, I hate to put it this way, but more of a purist idea of how they present themselves, you know, as being guardians of truth and justice in that respect. But the Acolytes was proven that that's not the case. Even with, with um, uh, Skywalker, the, there was that evidence that sometimes that the idealisms of one faction doesn't necessarily are agreed with another faction. It's like, yeah, um, Sidious wanted to rule the, rule the galaxy. So in his mind, peace will be gained through the iron fist of rule. We've already seen that in, in, even in regular history. Let's take away science yeah. fiction, regular history. History, Stalin, all those other dictators, Saddam Hussein, all of them have been brought down one way or another because ruling by an iron fist is not exactly how peace is achieved. No. You know, there's a governing body. There's people who have points of view. You just can't tell them it's one way or the highway or death. You just can't. That's why you get an uprising, and that's where, where, where everything falls apart. Where on this side, not so perfect. Yes, there, there are the you know, peacekeepers, and you're, you're trying to promote peace and unity, but at the same time, you're not accountable for your actions. And in this case, the Acolytes was proof that the Jedi were not accountable, and there were a lot of dirty secrets underneath that they've been trying to keep from the Senate. Mm -hmm. Even though the Senate's like, this guy from the Senate was up, up their ass trying to find out what's going on, but they were trying to hide it. Who knows what season two would have been like? Yeah, but... To me, this acolytes made the Jedi's look very dark. It's almost like they were the dark side. Yeah. Taking children. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it was weird to see that. It, it is weird to see that, but 
sometimes I, uh, in some of the other movies, you saw some, like, again, with, with the beginning three or the episodes one, two, and three, yes, Skywalker bringing him in. Oh, he has foretold that he is going to be the one that will bring balance to the Force. But, but he, was, he was growing up. He was becoming a teenager, a rambunctious teen, adolescent Jedi who easily manipulated Easily fell into the dark side by because of what happened to him in the in his personal life with his mother. To me, it's like the the Jedi Council was trying to enforce that he must purge these things from him. But I'm like, you're asking him to forget his mother. You're mm -hmm. asking him to throw his heart away. That that you just can't happen. It's like you're not a monk. You cannot live in celibacy and think. That, you know, I'm not going to feel anything. You feel. You know, if you're to practice a different way of him, how to deal with the pain, how to deal with, with, with the suffering of that loss, then you probably would have had someone who was, as foretold, to bring peace to, to, and balance to the force across. But it just wound up being that the, that the foretelling was more of his son than the father itself. The son brought back the father. But the son was the one who brought balance at that time, at the end. Return of the Jedi. Yeah. You know? But again, even in that one, that whole remember that whole conversation he was having with Obi Wan? It was like, uh, the Jedi, uh, I think was it uh, episode three, Return of the Jedi, in which he was asking him about his father. And, and he and he used the excuse, You said my, my father was killed by Vader. And then he used the the I won't say the excuse, but he used the terminology it, things are, are, are things are are spoken in a certain point of view. So, in his point of view, Anakin becoming Vader, Vader had killed Anakin. But Vader and Anakin are one of the same person. That's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. All he did was adopt a different name for his new persona, and that was it. But that persona of Anakin was not destroyed. It was still within him. He's still within him, and, and Ahsoka saw it. Even though she saw, as she, had, as she said it, the best of us can get turned as well. That's why she walked away. Now, she chooses her own rules, but she's following the basic principles of if there's something wrong in the galaxy, go and find out what it is. And if it's evil, rid of it. Get rid of it. You know, it's like we don't need that kind of mentality and, and, and rule throughout the galaxy. And that's what I'm going to do. So that at least the guiding principles it is. But... How she goes about it, what she's going about it, and her own rules and her own ideas of how she should do it. Yeah. It makes sense in that respect. The thing that I read the other day online, Soldiers of Ren, mm, a movie. Yes, and of course another one, um, Soldiers of Skeleton Ren. Crew, Star Wars: The Skeleton Crew. That's going to be the series. I but, can't. Yeah. Uh, Fourth season of The Mandalorian, ladies and gentlemen, that's coming yes. up, which will lead to the movie. Mando and Gogu, the movie. Yes. Which, I mean, it's, they say that well, it has, has the Acolyte destroyed you know, the Star Wars franchise. I won't say yes, and I'm not going to say no. It better that be. it set it back two steps? Yes. Yes, and again, I'm going to, from my point of view, say yes and no. I mean... Maybe, I mean, for me personally, look, the two people responsible for making Star Wars after the films and all these shows so big have been uh, <coughs> Filoni and Favreau. These, these two minds, these genius minds who created The Mandalorian, Ahsoka, Andor, and so on, have, I don't know, this great formula of storytelling. So now, you, now Kathleen Kennedy brings in Acolytes is what she wanted to bring. Mm -hmm. Again, but then she chose someone. And look, I'm not going to take anything away from her, you know. But the whole delivery of that show was this. Yes. Because it's like you got one episode a hit, one episode a miss, another miss, and then a hit. And then you, you try to use like, you know, Quentin Tarantino. You go, you go backwards one point, but you don't give them everything. And then you go forwards again, but that's like towards the end of the, like the, was it, third to last episode, then to explain, oh, this is what happened. And then go back again. And then go back again, and it's like, wait, 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 wait. That is lousy time traveling, by the way. 
very lousy time traveling. Now that's where you go cross-eyed and go, oh my God, I'm going to th I'm gonna throw up. Right. So in that respect, it's like, you know, it's like you, you're expecting people to follow this. It's like with the, the whole, was it episode three or four when, when the Sith finally presented itself and you already knew. It was like, it was not even a misdirection. No. It, it, it's like, oh, you had him hanging up there and it's like, and then he shows up floating downward, which I have to say, that was probably one of the coolest scenes I saw when it comes to a Sith entrance. That he just like floated right down, right behind him. Yeah. And you got like five or six Jedi standing there. Oh, Shaw, get out of the way. I was like, dude, like, you, you, why do you say it when he's already on top of him? Yeah, like you didn't see him like, floating down? It's like, I was like, y'all stood there like, ah, 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 ah. Yeah. You know, like an Abbott and Costello feel like, ah, 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 ah. like, come on now, really? Yeah. It's funny, but it was so cool how they brought him in. And then, and then he just like, he did the Latino thing here. Yeah. <laughs> did the whole Latino for, just kind of like, it. mira, mira, salte en medio. Yeah. Salte en medio smack yeah. and just send her into the next room. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> I did like that part. It was funny. But then, then, of course, what we love to see lightsaber fight scenes and the choreography was great but i'm like dude i was like are you really are jedi it's like damn it's like y'all need to go back to training because this guy is like out maneuvering you mm -hmm. and out doing you in so many ways that like um i forgot um the actress who played x23 she was the young one who actually lasted longer than most of the others and uh, had two lightsabers and but he caught her with his surprise mini lightsaber, top top, and I was like, oh man, I hate it when she, I mean when they when he killed Turned her off. The one with the makeup. Oh yeah, yeah. With the horns. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was felt bad. I thought she was gonna do good. Oh my god, she was really kicking ass, and I'm like, mm. yeah. mm. I was like, yes, 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 and then then he caught her. I was like, oh damn, I like that character. I, I kind of like that good. character uh, out of most of them in there. And I, I know one other that was in there was actually a character. The guy from the Clone Wars, the animated series. The guy, the young guy. Yeah, the younger man. I forgot his name now, but he was in the uh, Clone Wars, so they brought him into them. And I was like, but he was easily defeated. Yeah. I'm like, you say, like, come on, are you trained? At the, 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 right? And then, of course, Soul, <laughs> badass. It's like it's like watching it's like watching Kung Fu and, and Samurai put together because that's what he was, bro. He was yeah, like, I was mad he died though. Well, yes. Here's another thing. And I read the article not too long ago. Saul was supposed to be almost, was almost to be played by Keanu Reeves. Oh, nice. Now, that would have added a nice twist to it if he was in there. I probably would have said if he was in there, and let's say they kept the character alive, and he maybe she forced choked someone else, season two would have happened because everybody would have been in line. I mean, Kate Moss was already in there, but she was killed in the first episode. I'm like, what the fuck? And she, they kept throwing her What in the, the frack is that all about? They kept showing her in... in but I was waiting yeah. for her to get into a black suit because all those moves she was doing, I was like, all I needed her was to see her do this. Well, now that you mentioned Kate Moss, I heard also sidetracking a little that a Matrix might be coming out. I Another one, I, yes, because this... Yeah. The no, first... Not Matrix. Uh, no, the, the movie he came out with last, what was it? Oh, you mean another John Wick? Yes. Yes. I heard that yes. another John Wick might be coming out. Well, they never... I mean, yes, you see him collapse on the stairwell on the, on the very last movie, but... That doesn't mean he's dead. Exactly. I mean, the man fell from a building, for Christ's sake. Yeah. He's, he's been through some stuff, lost a finger that would have killed any other man, and yet he came back. Yeah. And so, yeah... I, I'm I'm not convinced of that. Mm -hmm. Not convinced of so that. So I heard there's another one. He, oh yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But he but he's also been Ken Reeves has been the only actor that I have heard of that has been given an open door policy yeah. to Star Wars. He can come in any time he wants, and they'll give him a character to play. He wants to play a character. Mm -hmm. All right, he we'll talk more that. about that and then some. Again, we have to open the vortex again to commercial. So take your motion sick pills because commercials, here we go. She's so fake. She's such a slut. You can see the layers on Look her face. Look at her chicken legs. <laughs> oh my god. How short is that skirt? <laughs> I can't believe she'd even put that on. <laughs> is that her dress? It's 
not even on her hardly. It's not even covering her up. It's actually disgusting. <laughs> oh my god. How can she do her hair like that? I don't even know how this girl has friends. I saw her talking to Holden the other day. Who does she think she is? I bet she slept with the whole football team. She's not even pretty. She's gained so much weight. She looks like a cow. <laughs> Such a good idea. Watch this. <laughs> You're good. Oh my god, that's so funny. You gotta post that. <laughs> I got an idea past this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, I can never get used to that. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Again, thank you for coming back to us. Again, this is Notre Ricans. I'm Mo. I'm Lou. And the next topic, going back to Keanu Reeves, um, I've been reading up and seeing that they're gearing up for the Berserker film. So and we're going to play Berserker. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you already know the answer to that question. Uh, and for those that don't know, Berserk is a comic book created by Keanu Reeves. It's a character that is immortal, and, it's in, and he's an immortal warrior traveling through time. He's trying to end, if I'm not mistaken, his immortality. And Keanu Reeves is both a creator and storyteller with, uh, I forgot the other uh, writer that's attached to it, but... They've had, like, I think a 12-book series. And I'm telling you now, it is some really good work, some good storytelling in it. And I really, really look forward to seeing him doing his John Wick action fighting style in this movie. Yeah, it did very well in terms of comics. Mm -hmm. It's like now, and again, another alert for those who, who are – who go to cons, there's this one up in, Can no, in Rhode Island. There's a Rhode Island con, right? And he's supposed to be there signing autographs. Really? Oh, I would love to go, but just the fact that they mentioned him being there, that's just pure insanity and pandemonium. Oh, my God. And that's going to be like, you know, you, you literally would, like, would have to cap out in front of the doors so that you're first to get inside, to get online, to talk to him or get an autograph from him because, quite frankly, it's going to be insane. Yeah, that's like two years and ago. I would have, like, all my, my Berserker books. It's like, you're sign, 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 good. Yeah. And that's it. They wouldn't let you sign on. Huh? If I'm paying for it, he's yeah, signing yeah, it. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to put a C note and follow C note. Yeah. To sign, 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 sign. I don't care. Yo, because all those books and then that movie, oh, my God. That's... You know, spoiler alert, if you want to commit, you know, it's like you're not interested in, in, in investing in Bitcoin, go to that con, bring all the Berserker books, bring a lot of money, boom, there's your investment right there, twice fold, you're going to be good, okay? Yeah. So in that respect, I, I can't, I really can't wait, because this is, I think they're talking about what, uh, 2026, 25, no, 26, yeah. where they're going to actually bring out Berserker, but with him, it's like, there's so many things that that he gets attached to just from the name alone. And I know it just becomes, boom, explosive. Like when we first th thought of him sitting down, you know, the, the reports of him sitting down with um, Kevin Feige over at Marvel, I mean, the first thing in my mind was always Ghost Rider. I mean, I could see him as Ghost Rider. He I could awesome. see, oh my God. But the fact that he's a, that he is an owner and a motorcycle enthusiast, I could see that, you know, I could see him Playing, I don't know about Danny Ketch, but definitely Johnny Blaze. You know who I could see playing uh, Ghost Rider? The guy from The Walking Dead. Yeah, he played Daryl Dixon. Oh, oh! <laughs> I think he would be awesome. I think so too. But I would see him more. Uh, uh, for me personally, it's like if you had it, you know, if, if you didn't have. And I heard he was in the talks with him. I think. I hope so. Well, if he's in the talks, he could he could be Danny Keach's version 
uh, of because there's more like one, two, I think three versions yeah. of a Ghost Rider. So again, you don't have to go with Johnny Blaze. You can do Danny Keach, and then you could do with I forgot uh, Morales. I think it was the name of the character yeah, who, was, who played yeah. it, but he had the car. He had the badass car. So you know, it's not like you can just pick one and that's it. No, you got three to choose from. Three different characters that are all Ghost Riders. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Because when I when I think of him, I would think of him as uh, as Keech, but with the flair of the fact that, and I don't know if you've ever seen this movie, The Boondock Saints. Yes, I, I love, love The Boondock Saints. For those that haven't seen it, go see it. One and two. Yes. I know when you like in today's cinema, you probably go, "What the hell?" But trust me when I tell you, this is a classic in itself. Fun to watch, funny to watch, but I'm telling you, this that's one of those movies you just have to have in your collection and watch. Trust yes. me on this. Trust me. I'm mad they never made a third one. Well, there's always been talks about it, and like you, I'm, I'm pissed off too. Like they come close to talking mm -hmm. about it and, and never falls through. Uh, you know, it's like I love and now the characters are older, so they can't get the same characters. No, I've seen both characters in different films. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're still like you know they're still good enough. I would say within their youth, uh, like e e even um, to play the characters one last time, one last time, I could see that. You know, one good, you know, one good story, boom, there's the Boondock Saints story, you know, and I, I, like, I, I always feel that way. Like Hollywood's like, sometimes I, I wonder, it's like, I know it's about money. I do know that. But the thing is, when you know that you're going to get the kind of reaction that people are going to have. I mean, take, and when I mean reaction, take, for example, Deadpool. I mean, I'm not going to lie. We, I mean, he could say it accidentally or whatever, but the fact that he leaked out that one-minute 3D animated short of him as Deadpool, I don't think, I mean, mind you, it took 10 years for him to see the light. Right. To see, for Deadpool to see the light. And even now, it's what, it's reached the one, uh, the, the latest one, Deadpool Wolverine, is already like, what, $1.2 billion? Mm -hmm. $1.2 billion. It's like, hello. So it's like that. It's like, see it. And, and if you want a fan reaction, put something out there. If you don't, if you're not sure to put it out, get the fan reaction, bro. Because those are the people, like ourselves, who are going to put the asses in the seats, the money in the concession stands, or buy the subscription to see it at home. So that way, you can then put something together. Because even now that they've dialed it back, they're now, and I, and I understand that they're focused and concentrating on bringing quality work, not quantity. Because we've already seen as high as, you know, as high as, as Marvel has gone up, but after um, Endgame, it, it's been like an up and down. You know, it's like a heartbeat. You, you, you're hopefully you, you're, you're praying that it doesn't flatline. You know, like 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 DC has the DC. I mean, that's flatline. Yeah. Uh, you took Henry Cavill out just to do this other movie, and I say you should have kept him because the character is not any older than the character that that you're bringing here. But okay, it's your vision, and you're banking it all on, on David Cornsweet. You know, to be your Superman. I'm like. Uh, We'll see. We'll see. You know, uh, you want to wish him the, you want to wish the best, but like again, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. I love the fact that I've seen interviews of Jason Momoa, and I didn't realize in the very beginning when he went in to uh, the DC studio over I mean, the DC, he thought he was going to play Lobo. Which to me was kind of the obvious. <coughs> I, I can't see. I mean, personally, I, I really don't see anyone else playing Lobo. No. I don't know. I mean, he's got the look already as Lobo. Yeah. It's just a little bit of light makeup. Boom, you're done. He's got all. The, I mean, like for instance, the uh, the first part of the tenth installment of Fast and Furious, that character he's playing right there, it's like a lot like Lobo, a lot like Lobo, and I'm like, hmm. But again, they asked him to be Aquaman. Not taking anything away from that. The first movie, fantastic. They, 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 movie? they made, they made, they didn't make, you know, Aquaman to be no surfer dude. 
Because that's all they said. Like, blonde hair surfer dude. This one, at least, he's a badass. Like, the version of the one where he lost his hand mm -hmm. and he had the hook. That badass, you know, king of the sea. Second one, I don't know. Was, uh, I like to call that the chicken of the sea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's tuna with mayonnaise and sandwich. Have it with coffee. And that's it. I'm done with it, bro. Yeah. Done with it. Uh, I, I don't know what they were thinking, but it, it is what it is. But that's the thing. Hollywood needs to start paying attention to the pulse. I mean, Marvel is doing it, and DC is saying dial it back and come out with smaller projects. That's why that whole explosion at Comic-Con in Hall H, when you see a sea of dooms, they part, and then the one that comes forward reveals himself as Robert Downey Jr., they took a story that was already in Marvel where that did happen, and now they're going to put that in there. I mean, yes, uh, I did see the, in, the, see the interview in which, um, in which they talked about Kang. And I, I keep forgetting the actor's name, but they, they spoke to him, and he was like, you know, he, he was sad. He was hurt. But, you know, he also said, you know, it would be great. He, he, he carried himself with graciousness and, and class. I, I have to take my hat off to Jonathan Mayer's Mayors for that, bro, because you know, he could have said all anything else, but he carried himself with class. But now you got to ask yourself, can D, can Marvel mm -hmm. live without Robert Downey Jr.? <clears throat> can they? Because after Robert Downey Jr., everything started going downhill. Yeah. So now the question is, they put him back in. It's like an injection. Can they live without Robert Downey Jr.? Can they... Make movies without involving RDJ. Whether he's a good guy, bad guy. I I, I would refer to this as because look even, at the comics. Even in the Spider Man one, they brought him in as a robot in the iron suit. He he was a he was a hologram. Mm hmm So can they live without him? That's a good question. And I, again I go referring to the comics like in throughout the years of the comics. Iron Man has been in every aspect. Even when you thought he was dead, he didn't die. He downloaded his complete consciousness onto a hard drive. Picture that. Mm -hmm. And then when they were able to revitalize his body or bring back a new body, his body through genetic material, what did they do? Went to the hard drive, and, and of course, he already had thought up the technology to put back everything he's downloaded onto a hard drive back into him. And the comic sold. And how many times the comic has gone through so many iterations of Iron Man that it just keeps on. It's like the story dies, comes back, dies, come back, dies, come back. You know, how, how many times? Is, so in essence, can the MCU live without Iron Man? Can someone else take on the mantle? I would like to say, <sighs> it's tough because I want to say yes, they can't, you know, they can't do without him. But then, come on. Like every other actor, he's aging. You can't, you know, somewhere along the line, Iron Man, another Iron Man has to sit in. Like uh, like what they're having now with Ironheart, the show series, because they're putting it through and they are in production of it. So okay. Ironheart's still coming through. So is Morgan going to be part of that? Is more, I mean, you have one person who can design Iron Man's suit, but Morgan is his legacy. Is she going to step up? I mean, you've got these fan films or whatever versions and, I would say, yeah, that sounds great. Thing is, will Marvel will Marvel themselves invest the money to make that happen? That's still a mystery. That's still up to the powers that be, or you know, do like you know, like a Ryan Reynolds, put a little test something out there, throw it out there, see what catches, see what bites. If you get a million hits like, like um, like Deadpool did in over 24 hours, that's when you green light, cut a check. Start doing it. Start doing it because at this point, you already are pretty much guaranteeing as long as you do the story correctly. That's since they're following quality, so we know that the story is going to be done correctly, you're going to get a great film. Case in mind, when I say quality, they brought back the Russo brothers, mm -hmm. responsible for, for Infinity War and Endgame. For the next two adventures, which is going to be Doomsday and, of course, Secret Wars. So, yeah, I, I, I mean, in my mind, I just cannot see how it could fly. I cannot see that. 
It had better on. now for the amount of money they get in pay for writing the script. Yeah, and then plus the amount of money they're paying Robert Downey to bring him back, which I do have a theory about that. It might sound wrong, but at the time of Infinity War and Endgame, they were already looking at all the actors. I remember they were doing a report and looking at all the actors and how much they were making, each one. Of course, Downey being the highest. And, they, and so it's like I'm figuring that they did, you know, they had to do that death scene, you know, as heart-wrenching as it was, but in order to end that character there because continuing with Downey comes with a big price tag. What you're going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah. And so steps out, graciously t moves on, gets an Academy Award. But throughout the time, he said, no, 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 no. Then gets an Academy Award. He says, you know what? I'll come back. But now his price is higher because he's an Academy Award winning actor. Mm -hmm. Not once, but twice now. Mm -hmm. Which to me is like a smart, the smartest move ever. And speaking of smart moves, yet again, we must now enter the vortex of commercialism. Take your Dramamine, whatever it is, smoke a bomb. But we'll be right back after these messages. Stay tuned. So we're back, and of course, still getting that stretch because oh man, that vortex is tough. Hmm. So, a question that was brought out to our attention to one of our fathers, thank you. Who's richer, Batman or Iron Man? It's a good question. I mean, it, it is true that when you look at both sides of it, okay, and when it's, when I say rich, I'm talking about it's like. Is his money continuously growing on his own without his input? Or is he actually a part in the face of the company and that's the only way it grows from that point forward? So in that essence, I'm, you know, I'm inclined to say Batman has the, the edge there because it's true. In the, if I'm not mistaken, in the third and final installment of uh, The Dark Knight Rises, he lost his company through what Bane was doing. And he lost all this funding, so he was broke. Right. But he had various various funds and charitable organizations that he had money invested in that he got back, and he, in the end, he bought back his company. There was a board that he answered to, but not anymore. Now the board answers to him, and the board is the one continuing through Lucius Fox, the other ones. Because I remember that high famous line said, didn't you get the memo? Yes. He was badass until he got in that room. He was like, well, didn't you get the memo? That was, that was smart because he, for him, he, he didn't have to be the face. And in essence, he's worked the money. He's like, uh, as some gurus would say, money is working for him. He's not working for money. Whereas Stark, that's another difference. He's the face of the company. You know, I mean, now with, with, his, with his death and his passing, it's like who, the, of course, there's an eventual board there that's continuing Stark Industries. And I think it's uh, Happy, who's probably happy, and, and, um, and his ex wife are, are handling the day to day operations from that point forward. But him, I mean, when was the age of Ultron, is like that kind of rich where he's like, how fast can we buy the building while well, he's fighting the Hulk? And then he got it, bought it, then put him through the building and <laughs> demolished the whole thing. But that kind of rich, but again, he's the face of the company in telecrops, the uh, repulsor technology, everything that he's doing in that respect in science and technology rather than weapons. The weapons, the only thing he has invested is, is his Iron Man suit. That's the only weapons that he has out there going on, or at least, and again, not a spoiler alert, but something to look forward to, Armor Wars is in the talks about happening. Really? Yeah. Oh. So when Armor Wars comes out, that's you know that's where you see as the face of the company, he stopped you know dealing in weapons and his weapon is his suit. But somehow the technology of his suit gets leaked out, and you know it from the events of Iron Man Two when Rajenkov, even though his father and him designed 
both designed the arc reactor, that's technology that's out there. It's out there. So they can get their hands on it. If they get their hands on it, they can replicate it. Right. That's how Armor Wars happened. And at one point, when Stark realized his technology that he created, his suit is happening, he went after everyone in armor and found, with, uh, found out that a piece of his tech is in there. And he had that uh, nullifier that he attached to, to each and every combatant he fought, he fought and it nullified the armor. If it had anything Stark related, knocked it out. Hmm. Knocked it out completely. But that kind of rich, bro, that he can do that, but he had to be the face. And as now not being the face, it falls on Pepper and Happy to take over. Interesting. Yeah, because... You're going to make me read the Armor Wars. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to go back. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't, look it's it up. Back. Armor Wars 1 and 2. They're a good read in, in itself, and trust me, it's it's the forefront of what's going to happen, you know, later on. As far as even if they bring in Doctor Doom, it's still not Stark, or it is, but it's Stark from I think another dimension. But the Stark presently in the as they say, the Prime Universe, he still has passed on. So Happy and Pepper are in control of the company. He is by just in name alone, but no longer the face. So anything new and continuing, it still has to go through the board, and the board is the one that proves and then goes forward. And that's how, the, as far as the foundation of wealth is concerned, is created from that point forward. Bruce, like you said, he pulled out money from charities and, so, and this one here and that piggy bank and that piggy bank with another piggy bank, and he bought his company back. Yeah. Bought every stock, only controlling interest. Now he owns it. And that's it. And he can sit back and just collect the dividends month after month. And I'm pretty sure they're in a hundred millions oh, yeah. in that respect. <laughs> so he can sit there in the car, read his paper, <laughs> traveling God knows where, or sleep throughout the day and, and do his vigilante at night. Where well, the dark night does rise. <laughs> well, that's, that's that good, Rich. Not to change the subject a little, I noticed hmm? you bought a book with you today. Mm, yes, I have. Uh, I got to tell you, I love this book. I love this book. And I highly recommend it to all to watch. It is the Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong. Bro. Yeah, they brought the Monsterverse and the Justice League together. And it was a hell of a storyline in itself, dealing with the Legion of Doom. Okay. The, the idea was that this time they were going to try and find a weapon in the Fortress of Solitude in order to defeat, defeat the Justice League. And what they found, or at least one of the, uh, was it Toy Master? Is it Toy Master? Yeah, Toy Master found the, the Wish Diamond, I think it is. The Wish Stone. And he made a wish, you know? And that wish opened a portal to another dimension into the Monsterverse event dimension, where now the, the, um, <coughs> the Legion of Doom were there, and the first things they come across are all the titans. Okay. You know, the titans, and Kong, uh, Zilla, and then next thing you know it, the wish, the, 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 the wish uh, diamond brought all of them into their universe. Brought them right there. So Godzilla, as far as this, um, this is concerned, he keeps the natural order. Everything in nature has its balance. Anything out of balance, he then confronts. He senses Superman. Because Superman is not of the natural order of the Earth. He is an alien. So he doesn't belong there. And what does he do? He travels all the way to Metropolis to, have, to confront and find the Man of Steel. And I'm telling you, it's one of those epic battles that there's a scene where it's like a, a standstill. Something doesn't make sense. Superman, Zilla, atomic breath versus heat vision. And it's just right there, stalemate. Something doesn't make sense there, though. He's Tell me. He's an alien. He is an alien. That's what sense that. Why couldn't he sense the Martian Manhunter? He sensed him first. That was the first thing he sensed, which was him. Or the Green Lantern. The Green Lantern's human. He's human of the Earth. The ring is not, is the ring given to him is of alien nature. The ring is the alien nature, but he physically is of alien. Yes, 
The Martian Manhunter was another one, but he wasn't in Metropolis at the time, and Godzilla sensed him first. That's why he traveled to Metropolis. Mm -hmm. Kong was on a different island. Uh, I think it was either Fiji or Easter Island, and there, that's where they came across Kong. And Kong was over there, and then Sela and all the other uh, titans were near that area as well. Because imagine, if you will, you know, they're, they're trying to work together to try and use the titans to then go against the Justice League. They go, to, they go to Easter Island. The Hand goes to Easter Island. And who do they think they can wind up coming in, in, in confrontation with? Kong. So, yeah, now a bunch of niggas with little you know, ninjas. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, correction uh -huh. there. Uh -huh. Ninjas with their little pig sticks. And they're going against a, what, a 300 foot tall gorilla. I don't right. think that's going to happen. Okay. Them brothers ain't going to last. Right. They ain't going to last. I'm telling you, and then you have was it, I forgot which other creature that was going towards Paradise Island. So now the Amazons are fighting, I think either Scylla or another creature or another Titan on Paradise Island. But it, it becomes a whole big mess, which they're trying to then find out what's going on. But then the biggest epic scene is that Superman's heat vision fighting, handling at the same time Godzilla's uh, atomic breath. Okay. It's like a almost like a, a, a Mexican standoff right there. But, you know, not to give too much away, but something does happen. Because, you know, every book you recommend, I go get now. Trust me, this was, this is one of those books that, yes, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed cover to cover, man. And, and it was good. It was good. It was good reading. I was like, yeah, 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 yep, yep. I'm, I want, want more. I'm hitting Amazon today. And, and I, and... Thank you, Jay, from JAL Comics. I, I got to give you a shout-out on this because he got me the hardcover edition. He didn't give me the, the soft-cover um, uh, graphic novel vision. This is the hardcover one, which is kind of very uh, hard to come by, you know, because the, the regular soft-cover ones all over the place. But I'm telling you, from cover to cover, this one is no. definitely be one to watch. People look for this. If you're a fan hardcover. of the MonsterVerse and a fan of the Justice League, you're going to love this book. Yeah, Definitely. I prefer hardcovers. They're the best. Oh, yeah. Because, you know. They, they last you, longer. They last longer. They're on your shelves. They're there. I mean, yes. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes, and it's, it's just basically a gratification need, uh, I will download the digital. I'm waiting for my book. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I still have this in plastic. I haven't opened it up yet. So I'm like, hmm. I'm waiting at some point where I will. Probably with my grandson and say, hey, take a look at this. Godzilla, you know. You know, this is either going to go into my grandson or my godson. One of those two are going to have this happy book as part of my, my gift to them both. But I already went and got, like, the digital versions. And it's not the same, but it is and it isn't. You know, swiping my finger to get to the next page, that's one thing. But turning the page, guess you get that more of that ante mm -hmm. anticipation. It's like, it's like you almost want to cheat and look back, but no. You, you sit and, <gasps> and you get yeah. that surprise. I mean, I love in the digital version where... Each panel expands and gets larger so you can read it better. And you kind of like a motion picture or a motion comic to be exact where it yeah, follows I like through. I don't like that version. Uh, I'm, I'm, well, reading it from that, I've gotten used to it, but I take it away and I just go back to just zooming in on my own and then zooming back and just keep reading it like I would be reading this in that way. It's just only using the swipe. But again, it's still nothing like, nothing like a hardcover, bro. None like a hardcover, whether it's a graphic novel or even just a regular story or a regular book. It's always that anticipation once you strike that page and you flip it to the next. And then the first words that pop up or the first panel that pops up, <gasps> you go, wow. And then that's it, bro. I can't, I, I can't even think back of how many comics that, that I've had my hair stand up. I'm like, oh, my God. And just like, yes, yes, yes. And so same way with the movies. That's, why, that's how I want to enjoy these films now that are bringing to life like i'm reading a comic book and i'm swiping in the next page yes i mean when i saw that scene of thor's hammer being lifted in endgame and we already knew it's like i already knew like i i, I gotta see it i gotta see it i gotta see it and then i see the come back and it's cap holding the film yes yes that from was that awesome. until the very moment that cap said avengers Fame i came on oh, i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> See, if you had a pig stick, I'd have yeah, just slapped yeah, it right yeah, there, yeah. bro. 
<laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, ends today's show. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, we look forward to the next time we get together and we'll talk some more. Again, I'm Mo. I'm Lou. And thank you for joining us from, for Notre Ricans. Live long and prosper.